Here is a boat I've been itching to get aboard for a long time. This is a 39 foot cruising yacht with a lot of difference, full of new thinking and innovation. So we've been waiting till May to get a good weather window here to sail a boat in Kiel. As you can probably see, we haven't got that. However, this boat offers plenty of protection. And as I say, 39 foot yacht, moving inside, I've got a proper pilot station. And it's all about this amount of polycarbonate glass above me. The views of the sails and the outside that gives and the, the light and airiness feel to the inside. It really feels like something totally different, this boat. Sunshine's on the righteous. So we're just heading back in towards Kiel after a nice long afternoon sail. Started out wet and cold, but now as you can see, it's brightened up. We've had good breeze, 15 to sort of 25 plus knots true. Sailing with a reef in the main and uh, going upwind at sort of eight and a half, nine knots. And then with the Jenica up, starts planing at 10 knots. Uh, and we were doing, you know, up, up to about 13, 13 and a half as it got livelier outside. But really good fun, you know, direct feeling on the helm. You can throw it about like a sort of overgrown sports boat, really. Uh, but it's comfortable as well. You know, cockpit's well set up for it. You've got this raised area for the helm. Uh, and I think it works really well. I've had a lot of fun sailing this afternoon. So from the helm, it's slightly unusual in that normally you would have a main sheet winch here, but this is used for these masthead running backstays with a twin spreader, twin spreader rig. But I mean, the, the, the philosophy here is to, if you're sailing short-handed, to use, they've got an NKE autopilot system on this. So if you do want to start tweaking and trimming your sheets, you put it on autopilot and go forward and do it. You can, of course, lead a sheet to this winch uh, and the winch further forward you can reach. But uh, yeah, in this setup, if you want to depower, it's a big fat head main. You've got the traveller there, easy to do so. So the coach roof design buys you two great positions for sitting protected out of the wind. This being one of them under the canopy here and obviously at the pilot station inside as well just while we're here really neat setup for the halyards using these constricted clutches here so the jib, jib halyard main halyard vang and the tack line as well chin up stand up bike through it all chest out slow breath you don't want to fall rest up dreaming soon it will all come true i feel you deserve this some more how does someone Straight away a factor I like is the way that the sailing areas and the, the living factor is separated on the boat. You'll see that in the helm stations aft. But from here, the, the person on watch, the skipper, is, has view of the sails, what's going on, but is in social interaction with those that are in, in the saloon, etc. You'll also notice it's quite tight getting in here, but it's, it's nice. You want this quite close to you once you're in. However, this post can move forward by what looks like about 15 centimeters. So it can be adjusted to suit the owner and the size of the owner. You haven't quite got standing headroom here, but come down a couple of steps and you can see plenty of space once you're in this main section, the heart of the interior. So you can see immediately, this is the sort of heart of the boat and the concept that Alex Rollick wanted from the beginning to get away from the conventional dark interiors, you disappear into a, down a companionway in a monohull and have this big, light, open, airy space. 
it's also a it's also a yacht that is offered in three sort of different guises and could appeal to quite a few different people. So this is a two cabin, fairly standard layout. But they, yes, they've added quite a few things like a second fridge, uh, heating, aircon, bow thruster, that sort of thing. But you, the second boat is stripped out for racing. And I actually think it was probably going to appeal more to people probably wanting to do two-handed cruising in general, fast cruising, but fun cruising. And it's a layout that works really well for that. So in terms of layout, it's different, as I say, but it works. You have this offset walkthrough slightly to port, come into an area that's plenty of light and headroom, sort of heart, a standing social area because the saloon is, is seated headroom only. And look how the galley is spread out across the beam of the boat. It's not just tucked over to one side. You have a central fridge. Plenty of work surface here. They also offer the boat with a swing keel. So the, the saloon table and this area here won't change if you do choose that swing keel. To starboard, you have a big sink area, a particularly big sink, double burner stove, good stowage below. You can link these two to give you more work surface area. And I like how this furniture, the fiddles on it, act as grab rails. So everywhere you, you can move around this boat grabbing hold of stuff. It's good. Move to the port side and say so you have a second fridge area. The crockery, cutlery, all nicely designed to stow for the type of plates, knives and forks you want, soft closing drawers. And then another work surface here, which I guess, you know, you choose how you use it. You don't really need another nav station because you have that pilot station there. But this has the switchboard here and you have your plotters and instruments, VHF, etc. here as well. So th some things I like about this aft cabin, this comfortable seat for one. You'll notice as well, there's no liners. It's all painted structure. Uh, keeps the weight down, but it also shows a good quality of finish and the, and the structure and stiffness of this boat is is very good. It's also well set up for a couple, as I mentioned, because although that berth doesn't look automatically very inviting, it could work well as a pilot berth because you can add a lee cloth or wedge yourself in under that. There isn't a lot of headroom under that cockpit, but you can sleep transversely or longitudinally. And then in a harbour, you'd probably be in the forward cabin anyway. And uh, yeah, you don't want your guests staying too long if they do come aboard. Good double locker here, which actually has a heating uh, outlet on this one. And you'll notice there's a fair bit of sort of bending required uh, and ducking. Because headroom does shrink in areas below the berth. And so you see this is, so I'm five. Five nine, and this is um, just above me here. But they can easily add headroom in there uh, for, for larger owners. But there's plenty of light, nice big aft facing window here, and that will have an opening porthole in it for ventilation as well. Again, you lose headroom just in the doorway coming in, but it's a generous size head, nice and light. Toilet itself is a good size. Uh, and acts as a sort of wet room as well for the shower so you can close this area off separate to the wash basin. In the locker you have access to all of the main seacocks in one place. So you just switch those off before you get off the boat. And uh, yeah, good size wash basin and stowage below it works well. But the best bit, your loo roll doesn't get wet. Brilliant. You lose the headroom, as I say, coming into the saloon. But once you're seated, it's a good size and sociable layout for six or seven people to sit around. Good size table. If you come in on this side, you're stuck, but quite nice to be stuck in here, really. You can still get out and they'll change that layout that end so you can get out as well. The port side saloon berth, large enough to, to sleep on as well. And you can have a lee cloth on there. Uh, and good stowage in the middle of the table, including plenty of liquor by the look of it. In 
and you still get the benefit of all that light looking aft. So they use nice design touches to break up all of this white, like these recesses in the bulkheads. And you'll see those lines, horizontal lines going through the boat. Coming into the forward cabin, you get that standing headroom just in the entranceway here. No doors on this, just use rolled up fabric. Same on the locker, you can have locker doors, but good size lockers each side. And quite a generous double berth really. Again, plenty of light whole windows as well but like the rest of the boat it's simple and minimalist it's got some nice design touches the odd nice little feature light switches sockets nice door handles that sort of thing but otherwise kept simple works well so I guess in in short I would say this Benta 39 it's fresh it's fun fruity economical but not cheap because it's built very well but above all as you can see from the design alone it's something different and it's a lot of fun